Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. <clears throat> the route that I take to get to uh, St. Andrews affords a view of, of the church, especially uh, when the leaves are off the trees. Um, some people might come in the back way and you don't see it right away, but I see it from the, the long view uh, down the street there. And I see this blue dome emerging as I turn the corner. And every single time, and it happened before we had the blue, the blue onion dome too, and we had a little gold one. But every single time I see that, I get this little, I don't know, it's some physiological response, I'm sure, but it's that, that little excitement, uh, that little um, surge, whatever you want to call it, I don't know how to describe it. But that little adrenaline, just like, like a little shot of adrenaline, I see that, that onion dome. And I'm filled with uh, anticipation and also not a little bit of dread. Not because I dread being here, I love to be here with you. <coughs> I, I rather, rather like spending time with you, I wish we did it a little more often. Uh, but we'll have to settle for once a week and during Lent all the time. <laughs> Coming. But there, there's this <coughs> conviction that I cannot resist being here, but also that I have no business being here, especially as the priest, especially as the father of this family. I have no business being here because I don't deserve to be, not to mention that I just don't even deserve to cross the threshold. I have done nothing that would make me worthy to enter. I have done nothing that would make me even prepared. Even if I was trying to prepare, usually the harder I try, the worse I get at it. Trying to prepare to be here. We hear in the Gospel proclamation today, the parable of, of the publican and the Pharisee. The tax collector and the righteous man, or what, somebody who thought of himself as righteous anyway. And this is, of course, one of the Sundays leading up to the Great Lent's beginning. I always get excited about that and a little bit filled with dread too when we get to the Sunday. But it says, the very beginning of, the, of this uh, parable, it says, Two men went up to the temple to pray. Every time... I drive down that street, there are two men coming to that temple to pray. The one who sometimes makes the mistake of thinking he belongs here, or, or has, a, has a place here on purpose. It's my job, I, I come to work here, I, 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 I take care of the people as best I can, hopefully. But then another man comes, too seldom who has that understanding that I really shouldn't be here in the state that I'm in. You see, anytime that there is a parable in the scriptures, where anytime the Lord is telling a story, it's usually a cautionary tale, and it is usually one of contrasting images. <clears throat> Oftentimes he doesn't explain it. Once in a while he'll explain a parable, but usually he doesn't. Because we're left to think about it. He leaves us with that gift to think about what these words mean and where we're to find ourselves in, in that said parable. I like to give the, uh, the example of the, uh, the prodigal son. That'll come pretty soon. But that's, a, that's a, uh, a parable of contrast where we always want to be <coughs> the kid who gets welcomed back. And that, that is true of us as well. But when we see that two men went up to the temple to pray, we're seeing the contrast of our hearts. We're seeing the pitted against each other. The battle of pride and humility. Being each other's opposites. We see the image of somebody who is justified in his own existence. In fact, even in the scripture, the words, it said he was praying to himself. That's not in there idly. 
publican stood, or not a publican, a Pharisee stood in the temple praying to himself, Lord, I'm so glad that I'm not like that guy. It says it right there, the secret's right in the words. He was praying to himself. He idolized his own image of himself. By all observable means, he followed the law. Perhaps even exceeding the requirements of the law. The fulfilling the, what, what, what to any uh, casual viewer would be the, the very definition of righteousness in a, in a uh, Hebrew context. The, the receiving and understanding of and keeping of the law, the, the partaking of the Passover, belonging to the people that way, and fulfilling the, to the letter uh, what the law that the Lord had given to his people. By all accounts, this guy was the one that, that we should exemplify. We should keep the Lord's laws and we should know the Lord's laws and receive them and understand them and seek to delve deeply into them and know them better. But this image of this awful person, I mean, we just heard about Zacchaeus last week, who was a terrible man, a tax collector, cleaning off the top and extorting his, his countrymen, his people. The image of the, of the publican is carried forward to, to the next week, to today. We've already established what a publican was. We know what kind of a wretched wasteoid he was prior to having his heart pricked by recognition of the one true God. We have these contrasting images of the two men who enter the temple. One who appears righteous and one who appears convicted. And it says in the scripture that one goes back to his home justified and one goes without his salvation. And it wasn't who you might think at first. We have to understand that the two men that enter the temple are, 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 are we are the two men. We have to fight that battle between humility and pride all the time. Humility is another word for holiness. The way to heaven is on the cross with Christ. If we do not allow our ego to be crucified with Christ, then we will have no part in his resurrection. Because this is the act of humility, the primary act of humility, the cross. And if we cannot enter the temple convicted, that there is nothing that we can have done to deserve to be able to cross that threshold. If we are convinced that we are righteous or correct, then we are not worthy. Then we're the public. Then we're the, the Pharisee. Just a couple days ago, I had the opportunity, <laughs> anticipating the, the this this uh, this parable being uh, proclaimed uh, today. I was I was uh, called to task by somebody very close to me in my family. Not, not in my nuclear family, but ju just outside. A cousin, a brother cousin, <laughs> who appeared irritated with me. It's okay, lots of people are irritated with me at any given time. <laughs> Especially family. But I had done nothing to my knowledge to, uh, to garner this, this irritation. And uh, I began immediately to go into a defensive posture, listing all the things I hadn't done in my head. And I'm sitting there, thinking, wait a minute, I'm not accustomed to having this sort of an interaction with this family member, we're, we're very close. I said, he's reasonable. <clears throat> something even if it wasn't really true it's my responsibility to say forgive me yeah. and I struggled with it so, please forgive me because I didn't know what I'd done yeah. it ended up being just a, a misunderstanding of, of, of words but I didn't understand
but I had to fight that urge to defend myself and being, well, <clears throat> this is why I'm not guilty. Then I thought, publican and Pharisee, <clears throat> you've done something. <laughs> even if it's, even if it's, uh, even if I had omitted something, I have, I have, I have failed to do something. And that's something that we have to take into account. We've sometimes uh, acquired a, a mountain of, of, of sinfulness, and a lot of it has to do with what we failed to do. The things that we have left unattended, perhaps even paying close attention to words before so that we would understand. We do not have to search far and wide to see where we are, the publican. It can be within the mundane minutia of our everyday. Most of us are loving people and engaged happily in being a member or a part of this family, this, this parish family. St. Andrews is very good at loving one another and loving others and doing sacrificial things. I mean, that's uh, something that, uh, that, that, that I think everybody could say about, about St. Andrews as a family and, and has always been that way. We're, we're good folks. Most people are good folks, though, you'll find. The ones that aren't usually stand out, and there's usually something wrong with them. We might find it easy to consider ourselves to be doing okay. We may find a temptation to say, no, I'm good. I'm doing okay. I'm doing everything I need to do. Nothing's out of whack with me. I'm, I'm, I'm great. Doing good. Be careful of that temptation. Be very careful of that temptation. Remember the publican who stands, who won't even lift his eyes to heaven, but continuously says, Lord, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Do not regard the things that have done that you've done well and, and proper as pearls to decorate yourself. Do not become your own idol. Remember the publican who stood in the back of the temple not despairing, like Judas, entering with a shred of hope that the Lord would redeem him, despite all of his sins and all of his misdeeds. Two men enter the temple, but only one leads justified. We must always keep that in the front of our minds. Which one is leaving today? The one who is justified or the one who is condemned? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Lord. Lord.